Hey guys, what a beautiful day to talk about God, and today I'll be doing just that. Today I'll be sharing my personal testimony of how I came to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. But before I get into that, I want to I wanna mention this real quick. If you are here right now listening to this, I really believe that God is using this opportunity to connect with you in a very special way. And perhaps it could be through my testimony. So with that being said, let's get started. So I was born in a, in a Buddhist family. And we came here, we came to the U.S. in 92. And at that time, I was about 10 years old. We didn't know anybody. I didn't know anybody. So we had to start from scratch. Before that, I have never, ever heard the word Jesus before. My first time that I have ever heard about Jesus is actually from a boy that goes to the same bus stop. We, be, we became friends really quickly, and we spent countless of hours um, talking, playing basketball, riding bikes, spending the night. Um, this is really a good part of my childhood growing up in America. And I was blessed to have a friend like him. So one day um, we had a serious conversation about God and he asked me, hey, do you know, do you know who Jesus is? And I told him no. Then he asked, well, why don't you come to church with me and get to know Jesus? Now, at the time, I thought the offer was really nice, but I wasn't really prepared for that because all my life, all I know was Buddha, and I definitely wasn't ready to get to know another God at the time. But he ended up persuading me to go to church anyway um, because he said at his church, there's a really nice basketball court and they also give out free food. So hey, when I hear free food and a nice basketball court um, for a kid, that's like, um, you know, it's like a playground in heaven, right? So it's hard, it's hard to say no. So then, um, you know, I decided like, okay, well, I'll, you know, come to church with you on Wednesday night. And at the time on Wednesday night, they had like teens groups. So there was a lot of people um, our age. So I decided to give it a try. So my first day at church, um, I remember it was it was quite a pleasant experience because right when we came in, if I can recall correctly, there was like, you know, an elder couple that came up to us, greeted us really nice, welcoming us. And uh, I felt I felt the warmth there. And not only that, but they also gave me a hug. And where I came from, we didn't we didn't really give a lot of hugs. You know, it has to be like something special, like in your family. And even that, my family don't give hugs. You know, we just don't roll that way. So for a complete stranger to come up and really like give you a hug, um, the, the degree of friendliness is really what got my attention. So um, my first day, you know, it... it it wasn't really what I expected. It was beyond what I expected. I really had a good time. Uh, people there was really nice and I enjoy um, getting to know a lot of people there. So then I, I started to uh, continue to go to church with him um, every Wednesday. And that's where we would hang out, play basketball, um, get to meet new people, um, do fun activities and learn about God. But learning about God at the time wasn't really my priority. I didn't go there to learn about God. I go there to um, basically just hang out with people. So fast forward a couple months, we had another serious conversation. Um, so he sat me down and he said, hey, I got to tell you the truth. Okay, you might not like it because I know that... You're worshiping Buddha right now, but I just have to tell you the truth that you only can get to heaven through Jesus. He is the only God and that all the other God 
cannot do that for you. They're basically idols. So I got kind of offended at the time because I thought this was, wow, like I thought this was like a very bold statement, you know? Um, and it's kind of like, I took it kind of like disrespectful because because he kind of took me off guard when he said that, you know, like I, I didn't expect a friend to come at me like that because I never like impose Buddha on him. Like I never really talk about why I believe in Buddha. So I try to stay away um, from religious conversation because I like even though I, I was a Buddhist, I didn't really know too much about Buddha. Like I never read up on anything. It was just like passed down from my parents and from their parents and just generation, right? Generation to generation. And sometimes you don't even know why you worship something. It just passed down. So that was that was my case, right? Um, so then I asked him, I'm like, what do you mean? Like only, only Jesus can get you to heaven. And he said, yeah, like that's, that's our bridge. We need that bridge to get to God. No man can come to God without Jesus. So, that made me think, you know, I'm like, really, if like, I didn't tell him this out loud, but I was thinking at the time, if this is the truth, then I'm in trouble because I don't have Jesus. But I needed a lot more evidence at the time to convince me that what he was telling me is true, because after all, this is all new to me, you know, like all my life, I... I know about Buddha, but I don't know Jesus. So, um, so yeah, so he said, hey, you know, Jesus is the real deal. You got to have him, you know, if you want to make it to heaven. You know, I'm sorry, but I just got to let you know the truth. And at the time, I'm like, whoa, you know, okay, but you got to keep this stuff to yourself because you can't be going around telling people this. Um, because in my head, I was thinking at the time, my family, you know, I invited him over all the time, you know, to have lunch with us and things like that. We have cookout all the time. And if my parents ever hear him say something like this, I know that they would be very offended, you know, like they wouldn't mind if he was just talking about Jesus, but he was taking it to another level where he said, Jesus is the only God. And I know my parents would be very upset. So I, you know, I kind of told him like, slow down, you know, like, hey, um, you know, it's okay. Like, I respect your belief, but, but you got to watch what you're saying, especially um, around my family. Like, I don't want them to get upset at you. So um, fast forward a couple months, this conversation came up again. Okay. And he's like, well... Listen, have you give much thought about Jesus? I said, well, kind of, but not really. And let me ask you this. Have, have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen Jesus? And I, don't, and, I don't, and I don't remember if he said yes or no, but then he asked me, and then he asked me this. He asked, do you see the wind? I said, no. He said, can you feel the effect of it? I said, yes. Then he explained. He said, well, God worked like that the majority of the time. You can't physically see him, but you can feel the effect of him. So that really got me thinking. But still, I needed a lot more evidence, you know, in order for me to give up what I've known for my whole life and to follow this Jesus, you know. So at this time, you know, I was kind of struggling with something that I needed help from God. And I've been praying to Buddha, but nothing really happened. So I'm thinking, well, you know what? Why not? Why not give, give, give this Jesus a try? Okay, because if there is no Jesus, then... It would be very easy to dismiss this case and we would never have to have like a uh, religious conversation again because that was something that I wasn't really comfortable with because I didn't know too much about it um, 
And I'm the type of guy that, even though I was Buddhist, I was the type of guy that that was very uh, uh, skeptical. Like I need to see things like evidence before I make a decision. But since I was a Buddhist, it was just kind of like passed down, you know? It wasn't really my choice. It's like if you were born into it, you were born into it. You know, so I didn't really put much thought in why I was a Buddhist, um, except for the fact that it would just pass down. Um, so I was like, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll take on this challenge and uh, I'll, I'll get to know Jesus. But I didn't tell him this. I did this, I, I did this in secret. So one day, um, I got on my knees and I prayed to Jesus for the very first time. I said, God, if you are real and if you are everything that my friend and others claim you to be, you have to show me something spectacular, like something out of this world that only I would know that it has to came from you. That's the only way that I would believe in you. Or else, why would I throw away what I have to worship um, a God that I don't even know if it's real or exists? Okay? And at the time, when I pray that, so after I pray that, um, you know, I, um, I, I pretty much, uh, you know, so I said that prayer, and in my mind, if that happened, I will give my life to Jesus, okay? And at this time, my thinking is that if Jesus was real, that would be wonderful, because not only I would have Buddha, but I would also um, have Jesus in my life. You know, um, my belief at the time is that, you know, why, I mean, I, 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 ain't, I entertain the idea that maybe you don't have to worship one God. If you can take on multiple God, you know, maybe that's good. Maybe that's more, that's more protection that a person um, can have. You know, so let me remind you at this time, I know nothing about the Bible, right? So, um, so I said, okay, so let's do it. So I did that. And, um, right after my prayer, I didn't, I didn't really feel any difference. Um, it wasn't really dramatic, you know, it wasn't like I heard like music from heaven in the background or lightning struck or anything like that. Um, it was just still a quiet night and nothing happened I didn't dream of anything I didn't dream I didn't see Jesus that night or anything so fast forward a couple months and I remember this one particular night when I was laying on my bed watching TV trying to relax before bed and it was around seven or eight o'clock, right? And suddenly, my body became paralyzed. Like this never ever happened before, right? And at this time, I was about um, maybe 17 or 18. So this never happened before. And so I was laying there, right? And my body um, became completely paralyzed. And simultaneously, right when that happened, out of the corner of my room, there formed a dark, dark cloud. It wasn't a figure, it was a cloud, right? And that cloud overtook me, like it like jumped on me, it attacked me, right? And, oh, wow, just thinking about that now, um, it's crazy. So that cloud overtook me and my body was completely paralyzed at the time that I couldn't even move an inch, okay? I tried to scream when I opened my mouth and when I screamed, like nothing came out, okay? I didn't hear any sound, right? And 
the only thing that I can really move at the time was my mouth and my eyes because I was blinking. I, I was still able to blink, but that was it. Like, I was completely paralyzed. Like, I couldn't do anything else but that. And after a couple seconds, which seemed like eternity, I started to scream out the word Jesus. I said, Jesus, help me, help me, Jesus, help me. And instantly, instantly, I was able to breathe again and the dark cloud left me. And that was my very first attack, okay? And I was so scared. I didn't know what to do because I never experienced this before. So, let, okay, let me put this out there. I don't drink or smoke or do drugs. I was very healthy um, at that age. Um, I was pretty athletic, so I focus on sports and taking good care of my body. So I know that I wasn't going crazy. I know that I wasn't um, under any type of um, influence under drugs, right? Um, and I try to reason with myself after that, you know, could I been like maybe, could high level of stress, you know, cause this? But at the time I wasn't really stressed out about much. I mean, there was minor issues, but not the point that I think it would drove me um, to basically have like maybe this type of experience, whatever you want to call it, a breakdown, a meltdown. Um, it, it just didn't make sense to me. And my heart tell me immediately that this is real. It's not like I'm imagining things. So I was I was really freaked out. I was really scared. I didn't know what to do, so I didn't tell anybody. I, I kept it a secret um, and hoping that it would never, ever happen again. You know, maybe I had a bad night or something. I don't know. I, I didn't know what to make of it. So fast forward a couple months later, this happened again exactly pretty much almost like the same time. Like it was nighttime. Like, like I don't know why it never happened in the daytime for me, but nighttime, right? I... Um, it happened again and I was terrified because my my body was completely um, paralyzed I couldn't move anything so I was able to blink and maybe open my mouth but that was it and then I was screaming as hard as I can you know screaming for help because um, I was living with my parents at the time um, and my parents is um, around so I was screaming for help but I, I couldn't even hear my own scream and um, out of the corner, again, that dark cloud form, okay? And it attacked me, like it jumped on me, right? Like over, take my body, you know? Like, you know, I thought I was a pretty strong guy back in the day, you know? Like I lift weights and stuff like that, but I was completely paralyzed. I felt, I felt hopeless, right? And this never happened to me before. And then again, I scream out the word, Jesus, help me, help me, help me, God, help me. And instantly, after that, I was free again. The demons, the demons left me. And it brought so much fear into my life. So much fear. Okay, let me give you an example of the fear, okay? that I experience. I'm afraid of height. I'm terrified of height. So imagine this, if someone would have put me on top of the mountain and tell me to jump, okay? Or push me off the mountain. The fear of that compared to the demon attack would be pale in comparison. That's how scary it was. It felt like the demons has brought a piece of hell with them. Okay, that's how 
that that was my experience like it was out of this world it was extreme fear okay so imagine this imagine if you're afraid of something like me like of height right this type of fear whatever you're fearing most in life time that by a million and that would be how i would describe my experience like that type of fear okay it was crazy it was out of this world so after that after the second attack i remember now i was really freaked out because it didn't go away right it it it, it came back and i um i slept i slept with the night with with the lights on every night now you know and um everywhere i go in the house i would kind of like look behind me you know like i always felt like something was watching me something was going to attack me if i didn't you know pay close attention you know and that and 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 that feeling is terrible it really is when 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 you don't have peace like i felt peace just like ripped away from me like what just happened like what am i going through you know um i like i said i was i was a normal teenager i didn't do any drugs or drink so why is this happening like this never happened before and i don't think this has happened to anyone that i know at the time you know not even my family so who do i go to so i so i ended up um keeping this as a secret for as long as i can so fast forward another couple months and you guys probably can see the pattern now it happens every like four or five months so a couple times a year right fast forward fast forward a couple months it happened again at the exact same location i was laying on my bed at around seven or eight o'clock at night watching tv you know just winding down trying to relax before bed and suddenly my body became paralyzed again and this time i'm like my goodness you know like i was kind of prepared for it but not really because it just hits you so fast but right when my body became paralyzed again i kind of like expect that the dark cloud was going to return and it did it happened exactly the same it formed out of the corner of my bedroom and it happened onto me overtook me right i was hopeless i couldn't do anything so i immediately again in my mind okay i scream out the word jesus help me help me jesus help me i was so afraid but instantly now this time this time i saw a bright light a super bright light more much more brighter than the sun you know if i wasn't going to look at the sun i know it's bright it's probably hurt my eyes really bad but for some reason my body just know my mind just know that this is the brightest light okay so the brightest light that i have ever seen just formed out of the corner of my eyes and it slowly approached me and then suddenly the light turned into a cross I was like, wow. Yes, the light slowly turned into a cross. And it was the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen. And as soon as that happened, when the light turned into the cross, the demons instantly left me. <sighs> so, what an experience, right? So I was still very terrified after this third time. I said, okay, wow, did I just saw Jesus in the form of the cross? You know, because my friend, you know, did tell me about it. Um, he trying to teach me scripture and, you know, a little bit here and there. So I'm starting to, um, having a little knowledge about it. So I said, did I just saw Jesus? That's the cross. But I was still terrified because it kept coming back to me, right? The demons kept coming back to me and attacked me. So I didn't know what to do, but 
I thought to myself, I have, I have to do something. I have to put a stop to this because if I don't, I'm going to like live in extreme fear for the rest of my life. And it was torment every day, every day, you know, everywhere I go. Well, day, well, daytime, it was okay. Like I wasn't afraid when I was like around people and, you know, even by myself during the daytime is fine because I never got attacked during the day, you know, um, it's always like nighttime. Like when the suns go down around like seven or eight o'clock. And that's the time when I experienced like real fear every day. And one day I just kind of got like really from being scared, well, still being scared, but like angry about the situation. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm a good person. I never did anybody's wrong. You know, I'm always um, willing to help people. So why is this happening to me? This is like so weird, right? Um, you know, I grew up hearing about ghost stories all the time from people telling me, but I never take any of that serious because hearing is one thing, right? But when it happened to you, is a completely different ball game, you know? So I start to take it very seriously. I said, okay. So I got angry at this. I said, okay, we got to put a stop to this because I can't just walk in around you know, living in fear like that. It was like real torment. So I decided to get with my friend. And um, at this time, you know, um, I I met this other friend at church and thank God, you know, um, God is going to put the right people in your life at the right time, you know, to guide you. Um, so I consider him my, uh, my mentor at the time. So I came to him because I trusted him. Okay, and he seems to know a lot about the Bible. So I invited him out to lunch and uh, we start to have a conversation about God. And I, uh, I said, hey, you might think I'm crazy, but since you're my friend, I, you know, I feel like I can share this experience with you. So this is what happened to me in the last year or so, and I never told anyone this, so you would be the first guy, the first person that I'm telling this to, so then I share with him my experience, right, those three times that I was attacked, and he said, well, and he knew that I was, I was a Buddhist at the time, because, um, you know, I didn't really tell anybody that, you know, I got down on my knees and, you know, asked God to kind of like review himself or show me a sign or anything like that. So he said, well, did you, did you do any different, like anything different in your life during this time? Um, at first I said, well, no, not really. I mean, you know, everything is the same. But then that night suddenly came to my mind when I got down on my knees and like asked Jesus to basically show me something, you know, um, like a sign. So I decided to tell him about that. I said, you know what? I, I, I kind of, um, in, in the process of wanting to accept Jesus. So I told him about what happened that night that I got down on my knees and I was asking for a sign, right? I was asking basically for God to like show me a miracle or something. And <laughs> he kind of laughed a little bit. He said, I think we may have an answer to your question. So I said, what do you mean? He said, well, if you, if you ask Jesus into your life, okay, if you open the door for Jesus and when you come to him with a genuine heart, he will answer, right? So it said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock and it will be open unto you and that's in um later i discovered that was in matthew um, 7 7. so he basically walked me through that okay he said that perhaps god is showing you something and the demons doesn't like it when you reach out to god because all your life okay none of this have ever happened to you Okay, until that day 
you ask for God. So he explained to me, the demons don't want that. You know, Satan don't want that. So as soon as you mess around with his kingdom, because at that time I was already his. You see what I mean? I didn't have God. So when you don't have God, you belong to him. He's your master. So he didn't really have to do much to mess with me because when I die, let's say, you know, if I die that day before accepting Christ, then we all know where I would end up. You know, I would definitely not end up in heaven. So Satan at the time, he knew that I was worshiping idols. So I already belonged to him. I did not have a relationship with Jesus. So he left me alone until I stir up the hornet's net, right? Until I ask God um, to show me something. So my friend, so my friend explained to me at the time that perhaps God is allowing this to happen. You know, of course God is in control, but he's allowing the demons to attack you, to show you the spiritual realm, that this is real. This is the real deal. And you're not the only one that have experienced this. Many people have. And right there, I felt I felt pretty good when he said that a lot of people also have experienced this and I wasn't the only one. Because then that tell me that I wasn't crazy, you know, that other people have similar experiences and I can relate to them. So um, I said, wow, really? Could this be the case? And like that just came to mind that, yes, I, I did knelt down on my knees and asked for God to show me a miracle. And and if he does, and I know that it came from him, I would give my life to him. So I'm like, wow. My answer has been um, answer, but not in the way that I bargained for, right? This was too much. This was too much. Like I didn't ask, I didn't ask for a demonic attack. You know, in my mind, I was thinking like, you know, perhaps like, can I get a trip to heaven or something? Or like maybe witness some um, angels or angelic angelic beings, you know, something more of a, a nicer side than have to experience the dark side. Well, as you can see, I got more than what I was bargained for. Um, but it was necessary, right? It was necessary for me to know that there is a dark side out there. Um, so that really, really have me thinking, you know, about, about everything, what my friends um, had told me. So at this time, at this time, I was um, I was really seeking for answers, and he said, "You know what? I strongly encourage you to start reading your Bibles because a lot of things in the Bibles could help answer whatever you're going through right now. You know, the Bible is basically a a biblical instruction book, right? Um, biblical instruction." before leaving earth. So he said, why don't you read the Bible and get to know God? I said, okay, I'll do that. Like I would do anything right now, you know, to, to not experience that attack again. So for the next, um, I would say for the next year, I spent like reading the Bible almost like every day. And I was able to, um, get to the the entire Bible in a year um, and God's blessing you know because at that time I did not have a job so I have a lot of time on my hand so um, when I wasn't in school um, I, I was basically reading a, my Bible at a coffee shop you know um, and I even yeah so so I spent a lot of time reading the Bible that year and I got through it but during this that year I was still being attacked. So that really like confused me, right? 
And so one night I, I got down on my knees and I asked God, I asked Jesus to come into my life. You know, this time I really want him to come into my life. Um, it wasn't a question anymore because um, he had shown me so much um, more than I can handle at the time. So I say, okay, God, I, I, I believe in your power now. You know, I'm done with Buddha. Please come into my life and take over. You are my Lord and Savior now. So I did that. And during this time, during this confusing time, God threw another miracle at me. So during this time, I found out that my sister, one of my sister, was was dabbling with uh, witchcraft, right? We discovered that because she told us that. And one day, I remember my um, my mom called me, and she said, she said, you have to get home right away. And at this time, I remember I was over at my friend's house, and I said, okay, is everything okay? And she said, well, no, your sister is going crazy, and we need someone here to help her. Uh, so I told my mom, yes, of course, right away. So I left my friend's house, and on the way home, I called my friend, my mentor, the guy that was helping me out at the time tremendously, and I say, hey, could you um, could you come over and help me? Like, I think my sister, like, maybe she's possessed or something, but she's going crazy. And I, and I just got a call, call from my mom. So could you come over and help me? He said, yeah, um, you know what? Let me call my pastor and see if he want to come too. So I said, well, that's great. That's great. Let's, uh, you know, let's uh, get back to the house and uh, see what we can do. So when I got back to my parents' house, when I walked in, all my family was there. And in the middle of the room, my sister was was there, and she was barking like a dog, like like so aggressive and violently. It's 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 it just hard to describe. Like she was howling, and she was very aggressive and violent. She wanted to fight everybody there. Um, I remember that she said she want to run out in the street and fight whoever. And maybe just like stand there and get hit by a car like it was like suicidal or something like that and she was screaming and cursing and okay my sister I have never seen my sister like that before right she's very she's she she's very calm and collective and seeing her act like this you know at first we thought we thought it was like high level of stress, but then we found out like it wasn't. It's it's more than stress because stress doesn't um, change a person to this degree. Okay, so at this time we found out that she was involved in uh, witchcraft, and there was a couple other episodes that happened before this, but I wasn't there. I was um, at school, and I guess they didn't really. Um, tell me much about it because they didn't want me to worry um, but this time it got so bad that you know they they pretty much told me everything um, and uh, so I got back to the house and when I walked in everybody was there my brother was there and he also got his friends and his friends um, were Muslim and so I walked in and I see everybody standing in a circle and my sister was just screaming her head off, barking and saying crazy thing, right? And, you know, and keep telling us like she, she's so angry right now and she just want to fight everybody. And she was even threatened the dog. Okay, we had a dog at a time. My parents had a little dog and she threatened to kill that dog, right? So... My mom was kind of freaked out about that, so she hurry up and pick up that little Pomeranian and like, you know, <laughs> basically pick it up and trying to protect it, you know. Um, but what I noticed was that so my so all my family was standing in a circle, right, and they would like praying for her. My dad was standing in the corner and he was praying, you know, to Buddha. And my brother's friend, they were all Muslim, 
So they broke out the um, the uh, Quran and they were praying. And I was just kind of like, you know, standing back a little bit. You know, I was, um, I didn't pray at the time. I was just waiting for my friend and the pastor to get here. So I was just, you know, more like observing, you know, cause I, like I had goosebumps, like it was crazy. I, like I, I never experienced that before. So I noticed that my brother friends was, uh, was praying. They had their Quran open and everything. And uh, they speak in a language that I didn't understand. So my sister, my sister, um, tell them to keep praying. And that didn't make sense to me. She was telling them, keep praying. I like it. I like it. And then she would like continue her barking. And then like a couple minutes later, she would like calm down and tell them, keep praying louder, louder. I like it. Keep praying. Um, and it happened like, you know, over the next half an hour, like I, I see like a cycle, you know, a trend that she would like come off her high for a couple minutes and she would tell him to continue praying. And then I got closer to my sister and she told me to back away. She said, I do not like you. Back away from me. I don't want you here. So then I back off. And a couple minutes later, she she said, there's someone that's coming. I don't want them here. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. And I didn't know what was going on because we were here like for like an hour praying for her and she didn't like you know I mean she was angry but she didn't tell anybody to get out except for me and then right when she um, said that the doorbell rang right so <laughs> looking back you see how crazy that is she knew that the pastor and my friend was coming before they even rang the bell so right after she said that, like, I don't want him here. I don't want him here. I heard a bell ring, right? So I quickly ran out. I didn't know who it was, but I was so happy to see my um, to see my friend and the pastor came. So then the pastor came and he um, uh, went up to my dad, you know, and, uh, you know, he asked us, um, you know, is it okay if uh, I, I pray for her? And with my dad permission and everybody was like, yes, yes, please, you know, pray, like pray for her. Um, so then he, he put his hand on her and immediately he commanded the demons to be silent. Okay. So he can speak with my sister and wow. The, he silenced the demon like instantly like that in Jesus name. I remember he said in Jesus name, like everything he said. One thing that stood out to me is always ended in Jesus' name. So there's power and authority right there. So he said, in Jesus' name, right? And suddenly my sister just like was calm. She wasn't barking anymore, right? She was like looking at him very intensely and he was looking back. And um, he silenced the demon and then my sister started to growl, you know, like an animal, and told him to get out and that she did not want him there. So he silenced the demon again, right? And he lay hand on my sister and asked her if she's willing to accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And right from that moment, she said, she said, yes, right from that moment, one of the most amazing things that ever happened, happened that day that I will, that I will never forget for the rest of my life. She was laying on the floor and as soon, and this process, you know, I, I know I'm kind of telling this kind of fast, this process took about like 15 minutes, you know, back and forth. And then, you know, he asked her that if she would like to accept Jesus Christ into her life as her Lord and Savior. As soon as she said yes, she was laying on the floor at the time, and then she got up on her like by like by like by herself. She got up, she she sat up, and she took her Buddha necklace off her neck, okay, and handed to the pastor like this, 
she she took it off by herself and handed it to the pastor. And okay. <laughs> okay, let me tell you this. As an Asian, I know that they're very serious about worshiping Buddha. So everyone walking around, you know, basically everybody wearing a Buddha necklace, right? And they would never, ever take that off until the day they die. And the reason for that is because they believe that it's it, it, it's it's their protection. It's their good luck. So if the if the necklace, if the good luck charm, whatever you want to call it, come off their neck, right? That means they would have bad luck for a long time. So no one would ever take it off. Okay, like you wear it basically until you die. Like that's your protector. That's your good luck charm, right? And my family was even amazed. You know, of course, my family um, are not Christian. Okay, but they saw that and they was also amazed. And I was in shock. Like in a million years, I would never um, guess that. But she took the necklace off her neck and handed it to the pastor. And... Right after that, when she handed it to the pastor, he gave the necklace to uh, my brother. And um, after that, she came out of it like, like she came out of it, right? And she asked, she had no idea why all the people were there. Like she just like, like, like a person just woke up from their sleep. You know, she said, well, what happened? Why is everybody here? You know, she she had no idea what was going on. So to me, that was, that was interesting. You know, this, this, this whole experience. Um, so God allowed me to see a lot of things in my life when I asked for it to be reviewed, you know? And um, at that time, um, my sister was saved because she she accepted Jesus Christ into her life and until this day she haven't never had the attack ever again um, so okay so back to me so after that event everything seems to calm down you know I didn't get any more calls from my mom saying my sister was acting up or anything but at the same time I was every four or five months I was still experiencing um, the attack the, the the demon attack so you know I got really frustrated you know so one day I knelt down my knees and I talked to God I said Jesus what more do you want from me right now I'm worshiping you okay I believe in you I believe in your power and authority I, I walked away from Buddha, okay? Um, I try to be a good person. What am I doing wrong here, you know? So I have a lot of questions for God at the time, you know? I, I ask him, please review it to me. If there is something that I'm doing wrong, please let me know. But please do not let these attacks to continue to come back and haunt me. Because even though I had Jesus at the time, I was still living in tremendous fear, you know? Like, you know that in a couple months, it's gonna return, right? So during that time, I was still living in fear. I was still sleeping with the lights on. I I slept with the Bible on my chest, basically reading the Bible until I fall asleep, right? But the attack didn't stop. It continued. And that really confused me. So I pray, so I continue to press hard and pray into God. I say, I know that you are a real God now. So I know that you're going you're gonna to answer because you're showing me this for a reason. I ask you to show me the spiritual realm, basically. You know, when I was praying, God understood my thought. You know, like I needed to see something supernatural, right? So God allowed me to experience the supernatural world. Um, and... That's such a blessing, you know, um, even though there was a lot of fear, a lot of pain at the time, um, all this is for God's glory. And uh, 
I wouldn't do a single thing to change it. So one day, so after that, so after I, I pray to God, right? Um, the stop, the attack happened again though. So it didn't stop. And one day God revealed something to me. He revealed that. So one day I was in deep, um, deep meditation. I meditate on God. And he reviewed something very important to me. And I'll share it with you guys. He pointed me to scripture. And he basically shared that even though I have him, even though I accepted him, I was still living in the world. I was still a worldly person. I had one foot in the door with God, okay? And the other foot out in the world doing my own thing. And God revealed it to me. You have to give your life to me and be committed 100%. Not even 99%. You have to be 100%. And here's why. You have to pick up your cross daily. So that really hits me, right? And I talked to my friends about this, and he, you know, of course, he um, helped me, walk me through the Bible as well. But this is like God revelation, right? He revealed this to me. So let me give you guys an example. If you are familiar with the game poker, when you, when a player said all in, that means he have to put all his chips, all his money in the middle, right? So let's say you have $100 on the table. You cannot put 99. When you say it all in, you got to put all your money in. And that's how God wants us, okay? All in with him, 100%, not 99%. Because I'll tell you why. This is very important. Listen to me. If you give God 99% and you think it's good enough, and you leave that 1% to sin, okay? Like whatever you're out there doing. And you know it's wrong. You know it's sinning against God. You are actually giving the demons legal right to be in your life. To continue to torment you. You are giving them legal right. Yes. That's what God revealed to me. And it hit me like a brick. Because I thought I was doing everything right. I thought I was doing like good enough. You know, I, 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 I tried to pray to God every day at the time. I read the whole Bible, you know, and I dropped Buddha like a hot potato after I witnessed, you know, all of his miracles, all, all of Jesus' miracle and his power and authority, you know, just walk right in and command the demon to leave and, you know, all that with my sister. And then on top of that, I saw the cross, you know, so I know this is real now. So I thought I was doing everything that I can at the time um, as a good follower of Jesus Christ, but I wasn't, right? I was still, um, there was area in my life that I still needed to um, correct. So I left that Y open. I left that portal open for the demons to come in and continue to torment me okay so remember this before i accepted jesus christ i never experienced any of this because why i was already i was already his saint already got me okay by his hand okay when i die i would go straight to hell so he didn't need to mess with me okay i can continue to worship buddha he loves that but as soon as I stir stir up the hornet's net, you know, as soon as I go to God, that's when all this happened. Right? So when you have God, let's say 99%, and you leave that 1% to the devil, he will come in. And trust me, he will. He will. Because he is relentless. He's okay. God is working for you 24-7. But also the the adversary side is also working against you 24-7 for your soul. You understand that? So if you, if right now you have any area in your life that 
you haven't given up to God. You are giving demons legal authority, legal rights to come in and torment you in that area. So when God revealed that to me, it made perfect sense. You know, so that's why I was continuing experience these attack. So rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. So that's what I did. Okay. I went straight to scripture and I repented of my sin. Okay. I repented of my known and unknown sin. And after that, the attack completely stopped. And until this, th this day, I've never experienced the attack again so um yeah so that's the important message um of this testimony and i know i'm probably leaving a lot of things out like i never done this before i'm not a uh, professional youtuber or anything but uh you know i feel like um this was very important god put it on my heart to put my testimony um out there for you guys so there's two things that I want to point out. Not a lot of people experience what I experience. But I also found out there are a lot of people out there that have ex similar experiences and they have publicly share about their testimony and all glory to God. That's that's wonderful. I also discovered that a lot of people have experienced this and they're afraid to share because they think that people would ridicule them and thinking that they're crazy or making things up. And I'll tell you this right now, it doesn't ma matter what people think, okay? What matter is the truth and the truth will always stand. So you are here to please God. He should be your number one priority. And you're a very special person if you if God allowed you to experience this, okay? Because not everybody gets to experience the spiritual realm. It's very real. It's even more real than what we're experiencing right now. Right? So you're very special. Take this opportunity and, and pray to God. If you have experienced something similar to what I have experienced and you're holding back, you feel like, you know, it's hard for me to relate to anybody or share my testimony. Take this opportunity and pray to God and ask him what he want you to do with your testimony. As for me, God was urging me to get my testimony out so I can reach other people who perhaps um, going through similar experiences. And I tell you what, leaving, leaving Buddha was not an easy choice for me because I basically have to give up a lot of things. I have to give up a lot of things. And following Jesus, you have to make a lot of sacrifice, right? You cannot do what you want anymore you know um, you have to follow his commandments you have to put God first over your flesh over your flesh fleshly desire leaving leaving Buddha I had to give up a lot of things I have to go against what my family want and 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 that was very hard because at first they were definitely not fond of the idea of me coming out and saying that you know I no longer worship Buddha um, Jesus is my God now and I know how difficult that is because I have to live through it you know I've been through it so I know but at the end of the day this this is this is a matter between life and and death eternal life or eternal suffering you know so a lot of time let let me ask you guys this we spend a lot of time planning for our like next vacation right maybe take us like a week or two so spend a lot of time on it when was the last time that you plan 
your eternal destination. When was the last time you thought about that and did some planning? So to me, this is the most important thing is, is having Jesus Christ in my life. It's about having a relationship with him. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. So you see, friends, Jesus is that bridge. We cannot get to God without Jesus. This is very important because many, many religions around the world, Buddha, Muslim, they don't know Jesus. They just know there is a God out there. Okay, and in a way they believe that, and this is from my own understanding, okay, in a way that they believe that all God are the same. And sometimes people might even take it a step further and think that the more gods that you have, the better for you, okay? Like, it's sad to say, but my family, my family is not saved right now. So if you're listening to this, please take your time to pray because... God will hear every prayer, so pr please pray for my family. So even though God showed my family um, a lot of this, they're still worshiping Buddha. And after what they witness, they're not opposing Jesus, but they're still worshiping Buddha. And at most right now, they might take on Jesus too, but they're not giving up their other gods. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? So to them, they think all gods are good. And that's one of the most deceptive things that Satan can throw at you. You know, there are many ways to God. There are many ways to heaven. And you do not have to worship Jesus Christ. You know, um, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to be here right now because with all the stack, with all the odds that were stacking against me, um, only God, through his mercy and grace, you know, got me out of the pit, really, because I was born into an idol-worshipping family, so I felt like the odds was definitely stacked against me, and only God could get me out of this. So, um, so yes, that is my testimony of how I came to Jesus Christ. It's definitely been a long journey. It's definitely been a long journey. And um, I'm just so blessed to be where I am right now. And if you, if you are in a situation like I was back then, thinking about, you know, who is this Jesus? Should I really get to know him? How it will benefit me? Well, I'll tell you what. Get real with him. You don't have to listen to anybody, okay? And the, and the nice things about this is you can do this in private. You don't have to tell nobody, just like I did. I just knelt down in my room, okay, and pray to God. He is a real God. He is there with you. He listens and he will answer. Okay, so just just be real with him. God embrace a genuine heart that comes to him. He welcome it. And I promise you, if you do that, your life will be forever changed. You know, just the the joy, the joy. Okay? Jesus is the Prince of Peace, right? God is love. So can you imagine that? The purest form of love and joy dwell in you. Listen, I have my ups and downs, and every day, you know, we have our own struggles. But just after accepting Jesus, the amount of joy and love that I experience from him is can't really describe it. There's no word. It's just, it's amazing. It's 
amazing. So, what do you have to lose? Just take this opportunity, and I challenge you to do it. But be patient with God. He will answer in a way and reveal things to you that only you would know that it came from Him. You know, and I would love for you guys to, um, after this, you know, if you take on that challenge, share your testimony. You know, get it out there. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Because at the end of the day, you're going to stand in front of God. And God is going to judge you. Not your parents, not your friends, but God. So really, do you really care what they think? Or do you care about the creator that's going to judge you regardless if you want to or not? So on that day, why not be ready, you know, to come home? So take this seriously, friend. This is, this is between life and death, eternal life or eternal suffering. You know, God loves us so much that he won't force us into heaven. He loves and respects us that much. That's why, that's why we have free will to choose. Before he even created us, he created the angels. And even them, even they have free will to choose. And that's how Lucifer, or Satan now, you know, made that choice to go against God. You know, God could easily, with a snap of his finger, can make robots. And everybody would love him. But he doesn't find joy in that. You know? He give us the free will to choose him, to love him. So the decision is yours. Where you will end up is based on your decision, not God. Okay, because God is not going to make that decision for you. You have to make that decision yourself. So I love you guys. And if you guys make it this far, wow, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, share this uh, testimony to your friends and uh, family. And just get it out there, you know. Um, if you have any uh, comments or questions. I know I probably left a lot of, um, you know, maybe details. But I try to keep, you know, the video within the, um, an appropriate time frame. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please, um, you know, leave a comment down below. And I would love to um, dig deeper with you guys and go into greater detail. Um, so yeah, um, love you guys and, uh, have a blessed day and thank you so much again for, uh, listening to my testimony. God bless all.